Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create a panorama generator. So basically, we will have some images, as you can see here, and then based on these images, it will stitch them together and create a panorama. So as you can see, it's almost perfect. We have some little bit black areas here, but other than that, it's almost perfect. And we have another example as well, as you can see here. This one is a little more interesting because the images are not of the same size. And if I go back, you can see here we have these images and it has created this uh, panorama with these images. So we are going to create this and we will make an automated system that will go into, for example, the images folder and it will go one by one and fetch all the images, stitch them together and then it will go to the next folder. It will collect all the images, stitch them together and go up to the next one. So it will automatically detect how many folders there are and how many images there are and it will generate those uh, panoramas and then it will output us the uh, images. So let's get started. So here we are in the PyCharm environment and as you can see we have the panorama generator project uh, folder and inside that we have the images. So I will have the link to these images on the website so you can download them as well. So we have two folders, folder 1 which has three images and folder 2 which has two images. And then we are going to create a main file. Now this is the one that uh, PyCharm generates by itself so we can just delete that and we can write our own code so the first thing we will need is our library so we will go to settings and we will go to the interpreter and over here we will add OpenCV so we will write OpenCV dash Python Python and there you go So while this is downloading and installing, we can close this. And I don't think we need anything else. We need uh, OS as well. Let's import that, import OS. And we will import uh, CV2 as well. And hopefully it will install now. Yeah, it's still downloading. Okay, we can start writing the code for our uh, extraction part. So we are going to retrieve our images from this folder. So we only need OS for that. So we can remove this for now. And once it's installed, we can come back. Oh, actually it did. So that's fine. Okay, let's remove that. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we will take these images from these folders and for that we need to know which is our main folder so we will give the uh, direction the path name of this folder so we will write main main folder is equals to images it is capital yes it is capital okay so we will write images that this is the main folder and then we are going to uh, get the list of folders that are within this so we will write my folders is equals to os dot list and we are going to list directories and we will write main folder so if we print this then we can write here what was the name uh, my folders okay my folders so let's run that and there we have it. so we have folder number one and folder number two so th these are the names so that is good so then what we will do is we will iterate to uh, each of these folders and then we will retrieve their images so we will say that for uh, folder in my folders so however many there are we will define our path our path is our main folder plus uh, we will add a slash and plus we will write the folder so if I print this out, you will see that this gives us the path. There you go. So it gives us images and one, then images and two. 
okay so we can remove this and then we can create a um, list that will contain all the images so we will write images is equals to empty and then we will create our list so we will write my list is equals to os dot list directory and within our path so what are we doing here so as we did here we were uh, retrieving all the names of our folders in this case we are retrieving all the images uh, names so within our folder how many images we have we need the names of them so we can write here print and we can write here my list and that should give us that so there you go so it's for the first one it's giving one two and three jpg and for the second one it's giving one and two again the name can be anything but i have written them as one and two it's so it's easier to uh, see and understand so uh we could write here that for example uh, print the length of my list and we can write here let's say f and we can put the brackets and over here we can write total uh, number of images detected mm. and we can close this so if we run that total number of images detected in the first folder is three in the second folder is two so that is good so then what we have to do is we have to loop through all of these images and then we have to store it in our images uh, list so then we are going to write that for uh, image name in my list we are going to get the name of each image and then we will say that our current image is equals to cv2 dot im read and then we are going to give the name of the path so this will be paths and and then we will write image name so that should do and then we can write it into images so we can append it and we will write current image so that should append our images uh, then we can simply print this out so we can write here print print we can print the length of our images and we can see if it's doing it properly and there you go so we have three and then we have two so that is correct but uh, the problem with these images is that they are really large and it will be hard to see it on the screen so what we can do is we can resize them so we can write current image is equals to cv2 dot resize and then we will write current image and then we don't want to define any pixel size so we will write zero zero and then none and then we want to uh, reduce the scale so we will write 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 so this is our scale that we want uh, to reduce this is the factor okay so now it should save properly and we should have the images yeah there are no errors so now comes the fun part so now we can actually use the stitching function uh, within our uh, OpenCV library so we have a class by the name uh, stitcher so we are going to use that stitcher is equals to cv2 dot stitcher and then we are going to write create and then we are going to stitch our images so now again this is all happening in the first part of the loop and then it will happen again in the second part of the loop so all of this will run twice so uh, at least in our case because we have two folders so here we will write that status and then we are going to write result lt and then we are going to use stitcher dot uh, the method stitch s t i t c h and then we are going to send in the list of the images so 
this is the list of our images for the current folder which is folder number one and then it will do it for the folder number two so then we can say that if our status is equals to cv2 dot uh, stitcher where is it stitcher okay so it will check if it uh, actually was able to generate the uh, panorama or not so if it was then we can write print uh, panorama panorama generated otherwise we can write um, print and we can write here per, uh, panorama generation unsuccessful successful okay so yeah we can do that and uh, let's see if that works we can bring this down okay so if we run that give us a bunch of warning and it says panorama generated and then again uh, panorama generated so it generated uh, for both of them so that is good let me check what is this okay this message is showed only once I'm not sure why this came in let's try it again if it goes away yeah it does okay so probably it's just a warning okay so panorama generated panorama generated and now we need to uh, show our results that we are generating so let's write it here cv2 dot I am show and we are going to write uh, let's say that we want to uh, this is basically the name so we want to use the name of the folder in this case it will be one and then the second time it will be two and then we can simply print the result and uh, what else can we do we can add just a wait key so just to give it some time and that should be good so let's run it and see what happens and there we have it so it opened up but then it closed again so what can we do we can add a cv2 dot wait key over here so that it does not close so let's run that again And there we have it so now you can see that we are able to generate the panorama over here and then we are also able to generate it here as well now what if we had a third folder and if we wanted to generate uh, the images for that as well so let's go and try that so let's show it in folder let me bring the folder here we will go to images and uh, let's just copy this I will copy this folder and we will paste and let's write it as three or instead of writing three let me just write a name so let's say city okay and if we go in again we have the same images so that should work as well so if we run this now so you can see we have one two and then city and then again the third one so you can see this one is one this one is two and this one is city so you can see that it is stitching all of them together even if the name is not one two three or um, what do you call it even if it's not in sequence whatever the name is it will grab it and it will stitch them together now if for some reason it's unable to stitch it will give you an error so this is a very easy way to actually uh, stitch the images together now the other method um, basically what is happening at the back end is that you are getting the features of these images and then based on image one features and based on image two features you will match them together 
and once uh, that is matched then the program will uh, orient them properly and then it will warp them properly so then it will be able to combine them together now all of this we can do simply by writing our own code using the feature detector method as well so we can use the feature detector method we can detect the features uh, and then we can stitch them together and the thing is even after we do that there will be still some uh, adjustments required especially in terms of brightness contrast uh, the lightning and uh, the colors all of this so a lot of the times if you stitch uh, two images together you might see a line in between even if they are perfectly matched so uh, the good thing about this software uh, sorry this function is that it handles a lot of these things uh, at the back end and of course it's not perfect but it tries to actually match all of these things together so we get a perfect result so using this methodology you can very easily uh, create a stitching program if you wanted to create an application that has the stitching function you can very easily create this in your application without going through all of the feature detection part but again if you wanted to go into the detail of how this works internally if you wanted to uh, change some uh, if you wanted to add some modifications or do something different or try different methods you can always go and read up about feature extraction uh, feature detection and then how you can merge these two together i have a feature uh, matching uh, what do you call tutorial as well and you can see um, how we can create uh, different uh, what you call detectors and how we can match these images together and we can even warp them orient them and we can stitch them together so uh, that is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new if you have any questions you can comment them below and um, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and all of this code will be available uh, on the website so you can uh, go on the website and download the code from there and the images will be available there as well so that is it and uh, again don't forget to like and i will see you in the next video